Okay, so just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Portuguese, I'm 34 years old. Uh, I can be found online mostly by PMM AGA. Um, I work as a DevOps uh, engineer at a Dutch company called Emesa. Uh, I'm an open source enthusiast. I'm a core contributor for, uh, for PHP. Um, and I wrote uh, a tiny container runtime, um, well, to, to understand how, how better how it works. So, a little bit of the story how containers came to be. So, it works on my machine, then uh, we'll ship your machine. And uh, that's, how, that's how Docker was born. Um, so, a little bit of history of the, of the container technology. Um, it all started in 1979 with uh, Shroot which is uh, still present on, um, yeah, nowadays uh, Linux systems. Um, and basically it changes the root of the file system that is visible by your process. So if you are in a specific path, you can say that for a specific process, uh, that is considered the root of the file system. So it cannot see anything that is behind that, uh, yeah, behind that, uh, that new root that you, that you have specified. Um, and yeah, and we had to wait some 21 years uh, for some progress on this uh, on this kind of technology. Uh, and we had in 2000 uh, free B BSD jails, uh, which already allowed you to assign a different IP address for each jail uh, that uh, that you would uh, that you would create. Um, in 2001, we had the Linux V server, uh, which was similar to how jails work, but it needed a patched kernel to to make it work, so it wouldn't work just out of the box. Um, in 2002, we had the Mount namespace. So in the previous talk, uh, Tiago already mentioned the uh, namespaces and we are going to go deeper into that. But this was the first namespace that was, uh, that was made available and that happened in, in 2002. In 2004, we had the uh, Solaris containers, uh, which already also allowed to, to um, yeah, control the resources that you make available to your container. Um, in um, Def when you would define zones and that would allow you to, to, yeah, to, to manage those resources. In 2005, we got uh, OpenVZ, um, which also provided isolation and uh, it was the first one to provide also checkpointing, uh, but it depended on a, on a patched kernel. So, but uh, in terms of checkpointing, it's just that it could take an image exactly at that point in time of uh, that container and then it would allow you to, to go back to it. Um, and in 2006, we had the process containers, uh, which were created to, to limit and account also for, uh, for resource usage. Uh, it was created by, by Google and uh, it, it eventually made its way to the, to the kernel uh, in 2008 uh, under the name of uh, C groups. So when, you, when nowadays we deal with C groups, they were actually the process containers. They were called process containers. Um, and yeah, they entered the kernel in, in 2008. So then in 2008 as well, we got uh, LXC, which is uh, Linux containers. Um, it makes use of uh, C groups and, uh, and namespaces to, to achieve the, the isolation. Uh, it contributed back to the kernel with, uh, with user namespaces. So another kind of namespaces that were contributed by this project back into the kernel. Uh, it works on an unpatched kernel. Uh, the development of it is sponsored by, by Canonical as well, and others, but yeah. Uh, and it's typically used for system containers. Uh, so more close to what a VM is than what you would use Docker for. Um, and there will be uh, today on the main, uh, on the main uh, audience, audi um, yeah, on the main room, there will be also a talk at 4.30 about uh, LXC and tomorrow there will be a, a workshop about it as well. So if you're curious, I think it will be, it will be interesting. But uh, as I was saying, so uh, about application containers and system containers, application containers, your typical Docker, uh, yeah, serve to isolate one application or a group of processes of that application. But the idea is that it will run only one application inside the, your container. Well, system containers, they actually boot the entire system. So you will have uh, init uh, and the system D or whatever, depends on what you are running. But so this is much closer to a VM than what, uh, what Docker is. And uh, yeah, the, the use cases are going to be different. It depends on what your, what your end goal is. But yeah, both have their use cases and both um, yeah, have advantages and disadvantages. Um, but okay, continuing with the history. 
In 2011, we had the uh, Warden, which was uh, implemented by Cloud Foundry. It used the uh, LXC as a base uh, initially, but uh, currently it outgrew that and uh, now it's independent from Linux. It allows uh, containerization on more, uh, on more operating systems, but yeah. Um, in 2013, we got uh, Let Me Contain That For You from, uh, from Google. Um, it made uh, also, it, it was the, the one that introduced the idea of application containers, so this thing to run only one process or process of one application only inside a container. The applications were aware that they were inside of a container and uh, they had facilities to create sub-containers inside of them and uh, to manage the, the containers by themselves as well. Um, it eventually got abandoned uh, in favor of contributing to, to libcontainer, uh, so Google yeah, stepped out of the of this race and uh, and uh, decided to help out uh, Docker. Docker. So yeah, 2013 we got Docker. Uh, it was developed by Dot Cloud, which was later renamed to Docker due to the popula popularity. Um, it initially also used LXC as a as a base runtime, but eventually they also yeah um, decided to go with their own uh, with their own runtime. Um, it introduced this, uh, this idea that Tiago was explaining as well about uh, the layered images. So, um, yeah, changes that you make to your, uh, to your image are done on a, on a new layer. Uh, it really popularized the uh, container technology. So probably today we are all here uh, hearing about this possibly or most likely because of the effort that Docker did in, uh, in bringing this uh, to, to everyone. Um, and they started also the, the Open Container Initiative, which develops the, the RunC runtime engine. Um, and yeah, and they try to standardize uh, how, how the container technologies should work so that it becomes interoperable with other, with other runtimes. Um, and yeah, so later in this room as well, you have the workshop uh, by Tiago, which, uh, which is also going to be interesting about, uh, about Docker. But we didn't stop there. In 2014, we got uh, Rocket. Uh, which was developed by, by CoreOS. Uh, it's also focused on, uh, on uh, application containers. Um, it introduced the concept of pods, which uh, some of you that are familiar with uh, Kubernetes are also familiar with this concept. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also run Docker images on the Rocket uh, runtime. It's, it's compatible, it's, it's fine. In 2016, Microsoft joined the game. Uh, Windows containers and uh, Windows uh, started supporting running containers natively. Uh, and yeah, Docker on Windows can make use of these uh, to run Windows instances or whatever. But uh, yeah, still makes use of, uh, of a virtualization layer when it wants to run um, um, Linux machines on, on Windows. And yeah. But uh, nowadays, what matters more even is uh, a little bit about the container or or orchestration. So yeah, how you, how you organize and manage your containers became more important than how you are running them. And uh, yeah, so if Kubernetes decided uh, from today to tomorrow to, to split, to switch the runtime engine that they are running, instead of running Docker, they would run on Rocket. Most people wouldn't really care about that. They wouldn't, uh, ah, no, then I'm going to leave Kubernetes because I really want to run on Docker. Not really, like uh, if they would that decides to, to go with something else, most likely uh, people would just be fine with that and adopt whatever they, they went with. Um, because yeah, orch orchestration of it, it's becoming more and more important how, how you manage them. But okay, so this is about history and now let's talk a little bit about how they actually work. Um, so, as I was saying, uh, Tiago already mentioned a little bit namespaces, but so let's dig a little bit more into what that means. So, kernel namespaces are a way to, to, isolate, um, to isolate your processes from the rest of the system. And there are various uh, namespaces, they continue to appear, new namespaces uh, that are made available on the, on the kernel. Um, and so, to, to describe a little bit the ones that matter most for, uh, for um, containers, um, we have the mount namespace, which means that if you, so if your process is now on a, on a new mount namespace, anything that you mount on that process is not going to be visible by the host. So you can create new mounts inside of that process, you can, uh, yeah, um, unmount stuff or mount stuff there, that, that won't affect what your host file system sees. 
So this is already gives us some hints of how this can be used by containers. They can mount things inside the, the, the container file system uh, and that won't affect anything uh, outside. Uh, then the, the PID, the processes uh, namespace. So this basically because I the, the, the process IDs are a hierarchy, right? So we have a process ID one, which will spawn a process ID two and then three and so on. Um, and what this does is that from your process perspective, um, you are P, uh, process ID one. So for the host system, you are 1200 and whatever, doesn't really matter, you have an ID a process ID, but from your own perspective, if you are the process, from your own perspective, you are uh, process ID one. So this allows you to, to um, yeah, not have a way to, to access the rest of the system. You cannot uh, mention the other processes that are on the system because for you they are invisible because you only have access to this part of the process hierarchy. Um, then the, the network uh, namespace, which, um, well, it just separates the network stack from, from the rest of the system, so we can just uh, completely isolate the, the network stack, and that's also what Docker uses to, to, to um, have its own network management. So it basically just separates the container from the rest of, the, of your host, so that you can manage the, the network independently. Um, then IPC namespaces, so this is uh, again to, to um, disallow uh, processes communicating with each other if they are on different namespaces. So some of, some of these inter-process communication facilities uh, will not work for communication between processes that are inside the container and processes that are outside of the container. So this is all to help the, the isolation. And a little bit more. Uh, so we also have the, the UTS namespace, which basically allows you to change the host name that you, that you think that your system has. Um, uh, without, again, without affecting what the host uh, sees as its host name. Um, then the, the user namespace, which is uh, the one that I mentioned earlier that was contributed uh, by, um, by LXC. Um, a little bit like what, the, like what I was saying about the processes, the, the here it's the same thing for the users and the groups. So you can believe that inside the container that you are root, for instance, you can map the root user and you, yeah, for all purposes inside that container, you are user one, uh, but outside of the container, not really. So again, it just changes the perspective from your process. It believes that it is uh, running as, uh, as root, but outside of it, it it's not. Um, and finally, the, the C group namespaces, it's also just to break down the hierarchy of the C groups, and we are gonna go to the C groups after. Um, but basically it also changes the way that, uh, that, uh, that you can see the C groups, so you can only see the C groups of your process and the ones that you may have created below. So it's also a way of isolating um, from the host system. And then, uh, yeah, C groups. Uh, so these are the, the process containers that I mentioned earlier from, uh, from Google. Um, and basically they, they allow you to uh, say that a group of processes uh, you can limit what resources they can they can get. You can limit the amount of memory that uh, that uh, a process and all of its children will have available, um, which is most likely the most interesting one. But uh, also the number of uh, CPU core that you can use and uh, block storage and yeah, there are a bunch of them. Um, and basically, this allows you to to limit. So if you want to say that a container uh, can use at maximum one gigabyte of uh, RAM then it makes use of the C group to, to make sure that, uh, that that happens. And besides imposing these limits, it's also very nice that it also um, makes, accountant, uh, makes it as an accountant of these, uh, of these resources. So you can at any point know how much memory uh, all the processes of that C group are consuming. And, um, yeah, and that allows you to, to have uh, yeah, a good overview of, uh, of what's going on. And then, yeah, of course, uh, uh, Shroot, as I was saying, uh, is also another tool. But so let's uh, let's go into it a little bit. And <coughs> so let me.
Okay. So, is this uh, big enough? Can you can you see? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so there there are some tools already uh, on Linux that allow us to to see a few of these of these things. For instance, we have LSNS to list the the namespaces that maybe I don't need to have it this big. Is this still uh, readable for you? Yeah. Okay, so for instance, LSNS, it already allows us to see what namespaces are currently mm, created in your, uh, in your uh, system. And uh, yeah, we can see here, for instance, that there are a, few, a bunch of them that are created by systemd for the user. And uh, there are 60-something uh, processes inside the each one of them. Uh, and then we can see as well that Firefox uh, also creates uh, these uh, these namespaces to isolate each tab. Basically, it's uh, it's what uh, it's what it does. It, it, it Firefox will also create namespaces for each tab that it opens to also ensure some security and that it uh, yeah tabs will not communicate with each other in ways that they shouldn't and uh, yeah that it won't uh, access the network in ways that it shouldn't. So you it can make uh, it can make use of these. Um, so if we do a quick test, for instance, if we run um, a Docker machine for a little bit, yeah. Mm. Ah, sorry. Yeah, so here um, we can also, yeah, I needed sudo to see all the namespaces for, from everyone. And uh, here we can see that root also created um, a few namespaces that are listed, uh, that are listed here uh, for this Sleep60. And this is basically just what Docker did. Uh, it created these namespaces to, to, isolate, um, to isolate from the rest. Um, while this is uh, still running, let me see. Okay, so here it's also about the C groups. We can also see um, that, for instance, here uh, Docker created some uh, some uh, process IDs uh, C groups, um, and uh, these are the these are the ones that are currently in use. Uh, so also for CPU set, if it wanted to limit, right now we are not imposing any limits um, for this uh, for this container. But if we would, then it would make use of these C groups that uh, that it created. To, yeah, to to impose those limits. Um, the the C groups are mostly managed uh, uh, via the via the file system. So uh, if we come here, um, for instance, we can see um, the C groups that exist for for memory. And if we enter the the Docker one. Um, yeah, we can we can all yeah see that here you would y you could limit how much it would uh, it would use, and uh, you you can also see for instance how much memory has we have we used in Docker. Um, Doesn't tell you much, but this is the amount of memory that has been uh, that has been used uh, by Docker in uh, yeah uh, up to this point in this um, in this session. Um, okay, then um, what else can be interesting? Ah, we can also see, for instance, what what uh, C groups a, a process belongs to. For instance, if I want to see the current process, uh, well, this this shell uh, where where it is, uh, which C groups it belongs to. You can also see that on a uh, proc self, um, and yeah, and this is um, all the operations that you do with C groups. You can install some helping tools, of course, but you can do everything just via the file system. If you just add uh, process ID to the processes that belong to that uh, to that C group, then your your <coughs> process joins that C group, and uh, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so what is really sorry. Another thing that is pretty interesting uh, um, that Linux gives us out of the box already is unshare. So unshare is a really nice command that allows you to already run 
a program um, and separate namespaces uh, to run that program. So let's do a let's do a quick um, a quick uh, example. So let's ask Docker for if it doesn't mind to give us um, the contents of a, of a container. So we are going to use export for that. Ah, forgot. Okay, uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> so now this is going to fail because I don't have um, a folder Alpine. Yeah. <coughs> I could fix it, but I could also use this. Okay, so if we now go inside... <laughs> it's going to confuse me forever. Uh, so we can see here that we have just a root file system <coughs> of, uh, of the Alpine uh, image from, uh, from Docker. So let's, uh, let's do some magic. So uh, we can, of course, we can shoot into it already. Ah, <laughs> I'm going to write it every time. Now. Ah. Okay. Um, Alpine does not have bash. Okay, so... Right now we are already um, we shrouded to the to the Alpine uh, to the Alpine file system, but we can see that it's not really isolated. So if we mount proc here inside, uh, and we look at the processes, we can still see everything, right? So this uh, is already showing us that we are okay. We shrouded into the into the file system, but we still see everything. We are not isolated at all from the rest of the system. So let's get out and let's try to do this properly with share. So just to give me again. So mount user A, not net because I will want internet, process IDs, user, C groups, fork, and uh, map the root user. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to do this for this process that, right? God damn it. Okay, so let's try again. Okay, so this already looks a little bit better. This looks more like uh, like if we were in a, in a Docker container. So actually, we only see the processes that are that belong to this uh, um, to this container uh, or to this namespace, to be more precise in what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, so as I was saying, like uh, because of the PID namespace uh, for all effects and purposes uh, for the inside this namespace. He thinks that uh, the, the shell is the, the process ID <coughs> number one. If we come outside, oh. so if we come outside, we see that actually that's, uh, that's process uh, 6743, but from the perspective of, uh, of uh, the process itself, it's uh, process one. Um, okay. Ah, so other other thing that we can do as well, and this also uh, works with uh, with when it's running a Docker container, is that we can join uh, all the namespaces that the process is currently in. So if we know that this is the process ID, so we have this nice NS Center program uh, that allows us to enter the namespaces of a target process. So I'm going to say that I want to join all the namespaces, and I'm going to say that my target process is this 6743. Um, yeah, maybe this is it. No. Ah, yeah, yeah, this is different, but sorry, I have to go look at my tip. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, uh, I believe I shouldn't be seeing this, <laughs> but I am probably because I'm uh, using sudo, but the NS Center uh, doesn't allow me to, to not use sudo. But uh, just to... Yeah. <coughs> nah. Okay. Well, but um, let's do that with uh, with an actual Docker container because there. So if we do. So now let's actually use Docker to to run it. So again. This is uh, familiar what we what we were expecting. Um, so this is the one from uh, from Docker. So we can see here that this was uh, launched by container the shim. So now take these ones that true and what I'm so powerful today I don't know but okay uh, <laughs> I expected this one also to to not uh, let me see everything but uh, yeah I'm not being successful huh yeah but uh, you cannot NS center without s ah wait 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 Okay, so now with NS Center, we joined uh, um, yeah, the namespaces of, uh, of a, container, a Docker container that we are running. And uh, so we can see here that, uh, that these are the, the processes that exist inside of that container. Um, and yeah, so this is very similar to, to what we get when <laughs> we do this and share manually uh, and what we get when we, when we run a, a container in, in Docker. Uh, yeah, it, it ends up having uh, having similar similar results. Um, yeah, so let's uh, just also do it once with uh, with um, Ubuntu uh, image and let's see if we can make it work uh, fine. Um, okay, so again, I'm gonna ask Docker for an image. Ah, I forgot the folder again. Can I can I not mistype it this time? Let's see. Ubuntu. I made it. Okay. So yeah, here we have now the the root file system of uh, of an Ubuntu, um, and because I. I played with this before. I know that um, I cannot uh, for Ubuntu because it needs set groups permissions for some things. I have to run it on a privileged way, but um, we can we can still enter it and do most of the things. Uh, so again, uh, mount uh, user IPC not net but process not user C group fork and that's it. Um, <coughs> oh man. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we are now inside of this uh, of this Ubuntu uh, image. Uh, so let's try to, yeah. Okay, so we need network uh, inside of our uh, image. So let's just copy, or we need a resolver. Uh, sorry, this is just a little bit too much. I cannot really read it. Ah, okay.
Okay, so we are actually, yeah, we are able to use uh, APT inside our bare bones uh, <laughs> container, so to speak. Ah, we can also do that thing because I, I uh, changed the, um, I, we are on an isolated UTS uh, namespace, so we can change the host name, for instance, to make it look uh, fancier. So for all effects and purposes here, uh, we are at the uh, at UbuCon machine, but uh, here if we, yeah, we are still on the same uh, on the same host name. So this is an, uh, another <laughs> isolation. In this case, the UTS uh, na namespace that allows us to do this. So uh, again, on a Docker container, you see a different uh, different host name uh, that is given by Docker, and it's due to the to the UTS namespace that it allows you to 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 do this. Um, so yeah, here we could uh, already install uh, something, maybe PHP. Sure, why not? Um, and yeah, because we are not isolating the, the network uh, process, anything that we do here will also be um, available on the, on the host. So we won't, in this case, we don't need a mapping like, uh, like what uh, we did with, uh, with um, Ubuntu. But basically, this would be the same. Um, just see if this installs successfully. But so this is not affecting uh, whatever I have uh, on my host machine. 7 to 19. Ah, I guess it will actually be the same version. But yeah, we could install a different version here. And uh, we are using uh, another version of Ubuntu inside of uh, our container. Um, and yeah, and we could use again the, the C groups now to limit the, the resources that are available for these. Uh, for these, uh, ah, lovely. Where is Lisbon? There we go. I just want to make sure that we can actually do the whole thing, and we can uh, serve something just to see it working. In the meanwhile, um, there was also ah yeah, we can also see, for instance, uh, PS3 also allows us to to see the processes separated by by namespaces. So here uh, I separated by the by the user namespace, and we can see each namespace and which processes are running inside of that namespace. Um, which is also, which is also interesting, and there are a lot of tools to deal with these, uh, with namespaces and C groups uh, that that are available. So let's see, ah, seven to nineteen. So it's uh, it's the same thing, uh, but okay. So let's just. Oh, oh, oh. <coughs> and. Um, Not found. That's correct. <laughs> but yeah, we can uh, we can interact with uh, with the network here because we are not uh, we are not separating it, and uh, just to do the the counterpart. So if we would do so, so let's get in again, but now separating the the network stack. So from the container perspective. It's it's all right. It's uh, it can um, it can run, but then from the outside we cannot see it. But again, so now if we do, and I'm not absolutely sh no 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 no. No, <laughs> I was going to say that uh, if we now do NS center into it and then we try to contact local host, uh, it would work, but it won't because the when you separate the network stack. Uh, not even the loopback adapter is installed. You really have nothing, so you cannot even reach uh, local host uh, from uh, from there. But yeah, so this is uh, this is pretty much what I wanted to to show. Um, and yeah, I think it's interesting to see that uh, Linux out of the box already comes with a lot of tools that allow you to to play with this uh, and yeah, to to understand a little bit better what uh, what makes Docker Docker. Um, but okay, so. 
And of course, yeah, so Docker then has a bit more than this. It also has some security features. It uh, interacts with AppArmor and uh, SL Linux and, and all of that uh, to isolate the, the processes even more. Uh, it does all the network management for, for the containers, so uh, that the whole thing of uh, having a DNS server to resolve the names of uh, the containers to, to each other, um, as a, yeah, assigning IPs to, to each container and etc. Uh, it has the whole image management, the whole container management. It has the copy on write uh, file system, and they even have marketing budgets and uh, conferences and uh, all of that. Uh, <laughs> in the case of Docker, um, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of things. So yeah, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Was it interesting? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The question was if I like more to play with C groups and or Docker. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm trying to learn stuff, uh, then playing directly with the C groups it's it's more fun. If I'm trying to get something done, I will probably just use Docker and uh, <laughs> not do this uh, this kind of manual stuff. But I think it's uh, yeah, it's nice to to dig deep and uh, to to yeah to have some understanding on this all this stuff. Yeah, that's it. Then thank you.